Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was a big day yesterday. You had some of the candidates attending college football games. Tim Waltz going to the Minnesota-Michigan game. He got booed there. And you've got Donald Trump going to the Alabama-Georgia game. Certainly a, a very good game that ended with Alabama winning. Trump got huge applause. There was this liberal plot to where they were going to fly a plane over. I don't even know if they ended up doing it to where they were like, Oh, Trump, you know, punted on the on the second debate saying he was scared. Of course, that's pure liberal manipulation when it comes to the debates. I already ex exposed all of that. I mean, Trump wanted three debates. It was Harris that didn't want to debate on Fox News. I mean, Trump had to have a town hall to replace it because she was afraid. Uh, but they were going to like fly a plane over saying that Trump punted on the debate. I don't even think I saw the plane. I'm not even sure if it was there. But either way. Uh, there was just crazy, crazy applause for Trump. Obviously, I mean, it is the Deep South. You're talking about, you know, uh, many, many Trump supporters at this game. Just in general, college football fans, they're going to lean more Republican. And Trump got crazy applause when he was announced. And this is an energized crowd because Alabama was up 28 to nothing early in this game. Or was it 28 to, set to 6 or something like that? Trump in his suite. He's getting massive applause. There's Katie Britt. She went to Bama, I think. But yeah, really, really good there. How about Doug Burgum randomly showing up at in East Lansing at the Michigan State, Ohio State game, getting some applause there. Uh, this was a weird thing. Why does Tim Waltz kick when he's on stage? Watch him. What is that? You know, you do the communist bow. That's one thing, but uh, this is just weird. I mean, I guess he's projecting when he says other people are weird. Uh, we've got, th this is very interesting. Latino voters, new poll, Harris only up by 14. That's crippling. If that ends up being anywhere close to accurate, Hillary won him by 50 Biden won him by 36. She is performing 22 points worse than Biden did in 2020 among Latino voters. Pretty remarkable if that ends up holding. And honestly, I see no reason why it shouldn't based on the trends there. You can see the difference from uh, 2012 to 2016 to 2020. This is the general election trend. I don't know if this is, because this is different than this. I don't know if this is just the vote, but you can see 44 in favor of the Democrats, plus 38, plus 33, and now it is plus 14. So it is getting closer and closer and closer when it comes to that Latino vote. And yeah, it would be very, very good for Trump, especially in Arizona. And we would expect Arizona to go to Donald Trump when it comes to that. You've got North Carolina. People were freaking out with the Atlas Intel polls that came out of North Carolina last night. They were very good overall. Trump was leading in five of the seven states, but North Carolina, he was down by about two and a half points, which is very surprising. I would say when it comes to Atlas Intel, they normally don't do state polling. And when you look at some of the Senate races and the polls there, I wouldn't put a ton of faith. I know they were very accurate when it comes to the general election popular vote, but when it comes to the just the state by state, the swing states, it's uh, it's hard to put a ton of faith in their polling right now. Now, maybe they'll end up being accurate. I, I mean, I guess we'll see, but it's just they haven't done a ton of polling when it comes to states when when they get cited as being the most accurate, we're talking about the national popular vote, not necessarily the state by state, you know, the swing state type stuff. So when it comes to North Carolina, I thought the poll was very surprising to see Harris up by two and a half. But again, I mean, if that is, if their exact polls, you know, if that's what actually happened, I mean, I'd be fine with him losing North Carolina by two and a half because they had him, Trump winning all the, all the Rust Belts. And if that happens, then he wins the election. So I'd be fine with it. I'm just saying North Carolina was the one state where people were like, well, this is not great. Um, when it looks at, when you look at North Carolina, you can understand a little bit of the concern just because of what happened from 2016 to 2020. Trump winning it by three and a half points in 2016. He only won it by one and a half in 2020. A, a, you know, a down two points. So, but that's just what happens with some of these swing states. I don't necessarily think that me, you know, that means he's going to lose it now in 2024. I actually think he's probably going to win it similar to how he won it back in 2016 by around two and a half to three points. It's a very close state for sure, but based off of Trump's approval, based off of Kamala Harris against Hillary or against Biden, both of those candidates were more likable when the election happened than, you know, where Kamala is now, even though she's improved a ton in terms of her likability it hasn't necessarily caught up to those candidates. 
I think the you know factors of all of that signal a Trump victory in North Carolina, especially if he was able to win the state in 2016 and 2020, when you've got a better environment, better numbers, a more Republican electorate. You would think that if he's able to win it those years, we're talking about very close margins, so you don't really, you can't say for sure, but uh, you would lean to a Trump victory, possibly by even more than three points, honestly, when it comes to that. Tim Waltz got booed at the Michigan game. Get that bitch out of here, <laughs> Trump by a mile. That's why they don't attend football games. I'd like to see Kamala go to a football game. She would have to go to like a, a, a high school game in DC. That would be the only place she probably wouldn't get booed. I thought this was a this was a really I'm not gonna play this because it's three and a half minutes. The media, if it was Kamala instead of Trump getting shot at, yeah, they would. I mean, imagine if that actually happened. Could you imagine Kamala gets shot at and it's some white dude? We would that would be the number one story today. You know, two and a half months later, whatever it is, and they it, with it's Trump, they just forget about it because it's a different standard. But with Harris, I mean, it would have. Oh my God, it would still be the number one thing. How this is um, un, this would be like the this would be worse than January six. It would be. It's funny how you know January six and how they blew that up versus and, and just everything that's come out about January six. By the way, why it's a total charade. Uh, when Trump wanted the National Guard there, it wouldn't even be a big story. But of course, they had to make it a big story. They didn't allow the National Guard to be there because the Democrats, oh my God, I hate to break to everyone, but the Democrats who think January 6th was the worst thing ever, they wanted the supporters to break into the Capitol. Oh, <gasps> no way. Yes, of course they did. They wanted it to be as bad as humanly possible so they could use that as political leverage against Trump. Of course, that's exactly how it works. People have to understand that. The, the better they understand that, the, the easier it is to understand the overall goal. And that's exactly what they wanted. They wanted it as bad as possible. And that's exactly what they, well, actually, I don't even think it was that bad, but that's exactly what they got in terms of people breaking in. Bill Nye backs Kamala Harris. Of course, Bill Nye's a liberal. We knew that. Science isn't partisan. <laughs> it's an interesting choice of words considering they basically made science partisan back in 2020 when if you didn't agree 100% with the vaccine and everything like that. I mean, you had doctors, legit doctors get banned off of social media because they said, maybe this isn't right. And maybe we should question it because that's part of the scientific process is questioning and informing hypothesis and, you know, and, and understanding data, but you couldn't do any of that in 2020. So it was partisan in 2020. Bill Nye is wrong here. They made it partisan. If you didn't agree 100% with their cult in 2020 and everyone needing the shots, then uh, you would be banned. And so they made it partisan in 2020 and then they, they banned, I mean, Twitter, when it was not controlled by Elon, they banned doctors who did not 100% agree and who were talking about maybe this not being the best strategy in terms of vaccinating everyone, including young, healthy people. But no, no, no. He's saying science isn't partisan, but it was in 2020. It's just funny how he says that, but we just saw a huge example, a glaring example in 2020 where it was everyone needs to get this thing, even though everyone doesn't even come close to fitting into the same category. A 23-year-old healthy person is not the same as a 76-year-old person that has seven comorbidities. It just doesn't make any sense. But either way, you do have that. DOJ sues Alabama over attempt to remove non-citizens from voter roll. Yeah, so I was like, this is just, it's mind-blowing, right? Uh, but the liberal spin is that, oh my God, all of these states are removing actual citizens um, so that's, I guess, what the liberals are saying, that they're removing citizens, and that's why the DOJ is suing them, and that you can't remove non-citizens this late, or or I guess this close to the election, something along those lines. But it is remarkable how in every single one of these scenarios, the liberals fight against removing like I've never seen a single scenario in the last since this has been a huge thing within the last four or five years where there's been any type of momentum from liberals to actually remove illegals from voting. They're always, 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 in every scenario, the ones fighting the removal, always. And this is the DOJ, but obviously liberals were very happy that this was happening. They, they threw a party. They were like, yeah, they're finally doing something. Every single time there's any story, whether it's the, you, you know, the, the save act, whether it's something like this, where they try and remove the non-citizens or dead people, they will always fight it. There is not a single scenario where you have liberals saying, yes, we need to remove these people to keep our elections fair. That has never happened. It is glaring. It is glaring. And then they gaslight and say, 
How dare you accuse us of cheating? We, you know what? Yes, half of our party wants Trump's head to be blown off, but we would never cheat. Yes, we don't want, you know, we don't want any of these non-citizens removed from the voter rolls. We don't want the, the SAVE Act to pass, but we, how dare you accuse us? Oh my God. God, you're the threat to democracy. Look at January 6th. Yes, Trump wanted the National Guard there and we refused it because we wanted to make it as bad as possible. But ooh, January 6th, yes, we forced Biden to step down the incumbent president, even though he won 14 million votes and Kamala got nothing and installed Kamala. But you're the threat to democracy, not us. Oh, so see, you understand the hypocrisy. And this is just another thing, and I agree with Rasmussen here. I think Trump's going to win independence, absolutely, by around nine points. It makes total sense with how radical Harris is. This is a good poll. This is the more accurate polls, and it's not because Rasmussen is conservative. Go look at their history. This is accurate. Trump is going to win him by around nine points. That's, uh, that, that's, that's what I would expect when it comes to that. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.